Well, take your Bibles if you would. Let's go back to, again to Galatians chapter 2 if you would please. Galatians chapter 2 as we are going to uh, look again at part 2 of our alive in Christ. And I trust that you are alive in Christ tonight. And I trust that He's alive in you. Amen. All right. Christ in you, the hope of glory. So let's take and follow along in Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20. As we look and keep in mind this morning now, we looked alive in Christ. And we looked at some things that would help us. And that was that we were alive in His presence. And that took place at salvation. And then we had that blessed hope of presence, of hope in Christ, the hope of glory, Christ in you. And then we saw that was made possible by the Holy Spirit in us. And that we were able to talk to Him and to pray to Him and to hear Him. And then we learned that to be alive in Christ, we want to be alive in His purpose. And that purpose was for you and I to proclaim the Word. And then that proclaiming and acknowledging the presence of Christ in our lives and the Word of God in our lives, we learned that we were to preach, right? We were to warn, and we were to teach. And then that would bring us to uh, uh, alive in Christ in His power. It is His power that worketh in us mightily. And that's what we want God to do this year for us in our church. In the lives of us believers and in the life of our church collectively as a body of believers, that God, because we are alive in Christ tonight, and Christ is alive in us, then we want to do His work mightily for Him as He works in us mightily. It's His work, and He's the one doing the working. We just need to make ourselves available for the work. Okay, and so alive in Christ, and remember we talked about that through, what's this here? It's just a shell, isn't it? It's a piece of plastic. It's a plastic canister that contains power, and when I turn it on, the power comes on, but without the power, this is just a plastic empty canister. It does absolutely nothing, and this is like our life. We're just a canister, a container for Christ to live in us and the Holy Spirit to live in us, and when He does, the light's going to come on because we are the light of the world. So we want to continue looking at that tonight, and we talk about this Christ in us, alive in Christ, and uh, we talk about His presence, we talk about His purpose, we talk about His power. Well, we're going to have to figure out some things on how that's going to take place and how we're going to do that and accomplish that, and I believe we can look at that tonight. Let's uh, again read our text. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. See, the canister and the light, okay? And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. The Spirit of God hath made me, and the breath of the Almighty hath given me life. You see, church, tonight the Christian life is designed to be a life of unity and union with Christ. We are in Christ, and He is in us. Hence, we share in the spiritual provision of His death and resurrection. As we said this morning, if you remember, okay, God sent Jesus not only to get you and I into heaven, but to get heaven in us. And when Jesus came down and into our lives, guess what? Heaven came in. So you see, you're really not that far away from heaven as you think you are. Amen. Amen. If Jesus is living on the inside and the Spirit of God is living on the inside, where are they from? They're from heaven. And it's amazing how God is so good he can live in both places at the same time. So you can't do that because you're not omnipresent, but he is. That's the difference between you and God. Amen. That's a big difference. Isn't that great that God can live in heaven tonight, wherever heaven is, 
with the Son, the Lord Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and the angels of heaven, and all the saints that's gone before us, and at the same time, He lives in my heart. Boy, that, that, that's, all, that's awesome. That's a mind-boggling thought, though, isn't it? But yet, at the same time, it's truth and reality. And so, next time you talk about heaven or think about heaven, don't think of it as being so far away. It's living right here. You see, we're heaven's kids, and we need to live and act like we are in heaven. We are representatives of heaven, and we'll see a little bit of that maybe perhaps this evening. Our Father, we do thank you for tonight. We ask that you bless our time in your word. We thank you for the, being able to continue this on from this morning, and we give you praise and glory and honor for it. Lord, we bow humbly before you tonight, asking again for your wisdom and your instructions from your Holy Spirit and your word. Lord, for your filling that you would bring to remembrance the things that Jesus has said to us. Father, we ask that you would give us wisdom and understanding, illumination, wisdom to apply what we're going to learn this evening. And Father, we'll give you all the praise and thanks and glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, all of Jesus in all of me right? First and foremost in my life is all of Jesus in all of me, and that needs to be first and foremost in my life and in your life. That's what Colossians 1, 18 through 21 talks about, that Jesus made everything, and everything was made for him, by him, and for him, and consisteth of all things, and that he desires to have the preeminence in your life. And the word preeminence means first place. You see, Jesus has got to be first place in our lives. Amen. Everything has got to be first. So if Jesus is going to be all of Jesus and all of me, first and foremost in my life, how in the world do I do this? How do we uh, that are alive in Christ, in His presence, in His purpose, and in His power, how is this all going to be happening? Well, I think we need to consider three wonderful little truths tonight as we take a look at this. And I think the first thing we need to consider is that if we're going to work in His power, work His life out in our life, if we're going to do all what we've talked about this morning and continue on this evening, and if uh, we're going to be able to accomplish anything for God, we have to rely on Him. We have got to rely on Him. Okay, folks, we cannot do this on our own. We cannot do this in our own strength. We cannot do this apart from His power and His filling. And we're going to have to rely on Christ and probably more than we ever have uh, in the past. Uh, this year as we approach 2019 and go into 2019, it, I think God's people are going to have to rely on Christ more than we've ever relied on Him before. See, we rely too much, I think, on ourselves and our own ability, our own talents and our own finances and our own uh, what all that we have and so forth. And sometimes we leave Jesus out. But we've got to rely on Christ. We need to rely on Him. Now, the word rely, if I'm going to rely on Christ more than ever this year, what does that mean? It means to place one's faith or confidence or trust or to count on. So we're going to have to place our trust and our confidence and count more on Jesus, church, this year than probably we've ever had before as we continue on into the world as we know it. You know, the Bible says that things that the love of many wax cold and that things are going to get worse, not better. That's what the Bible says. So don't be looking for this utopia and, and peace and all of this stuff because my Bible tells me that things are going to get worse. And with that being in mind, and especially what's happening to Christians right now, what is going on in the Christian world, around the world, the attacks, the, the, the onslaught, the, perse uh, the persecution, uh, everything, I'm telling you, we, we haven't experienced it yet, but we're starting to here in this country. There is an all-out attack and hatred for the Christian today in America. Amen. I mean, it's time to, for us to wake up and smell the roses because that is the truth. And as these attacks come on us, uh, and sadly it's going to come from our own people, from our own country, it's going to come from our own government, 
and all that's going on and happening. And I guarantee you, we're going to have to get to a place, church, where we're going to have to rely, count on, depend on, you see, trust and have confidence in our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, that is if we're going to be alive in Christ, we're, and to do His work and His bidding, we're going to have to rely on Jesus more than we've ever relied on before. And so one of the first things, I think one of the things we need to rely on for is our strength. We're going to have to rely on Christ for our strength uh, is in Him. Notice our strength is in Him. It's not in you and I. The Bible says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me in Philippians 4.13, right? In other words, we could say it this way, I have strength for all things in Christ who empowers me. You see, so as I, you and I rely on Christ more than ever, we're going to rely on His strength is in Him. See, the strength is not in you and I, church. The strength is in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're going to have to rely on His strength, not on ours. See, if we try to do this in the flesh, we're going to go nowhere. If we try to do all of this in the flesh and not rely on the strength of Christ and the strength of God, I can tell you what, you're going to fizzle out and burn out real quick. And you won't last too long in this, trust me. Because you're going to have to rely on His strength. Because, see, the strength that we have, He strengthens us. That strength is the source, and Jesus is the source of the strength. You see, and so we're going to have to rely on his, his strength. Our strength, church, is in Him, okay? Our strength is in Him, and that is because why? He is the life. Christ is the life. It's not your life or my life. It's His life living through you and I. It's His life living in you and I. See, He wants to live His life with His strength through our life. So we have to rely on Christ in order to do that. You see, Christ in me, the hope of glory. You see, that's what we have to do, you see. And so we got to rely on Him because He is the life. John put it this way in John 15, 4. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. And then notice, He's using the vine there, the grapevine and the fruit, uh, as an illustration, example here, metaphor. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. And that's why Jesus went on to say, without me, you can do nothing. Matter of fact, the Bible tells us, unless the Lord builds a house, we labor in vain. Amen. See, God is the one that has to build the house. But keep in mind, He wants to build the house through you and I. Jesus isn't coming down from the clouds of glory, and He's not going to walk around here in, in, in our area and build a church. No, He expects you and I to do that. And he's going to build his church through us as he lives out his life in our life as we depend, as we count, as we trust, as we put our faith and rely on him. And since he is the life and he is our strength, my strength cometh from the Lord. Your strength cometh from the Lord. You won't get it in Gatorade or Powerade. All right, you're not going to get strength from the, the vitamin Bs and all the B vitamins. They'll give you a little bit of energy. But we're talking about strength, man. We're talking about inner strength to do what God wants us to do this year. And to be able to do what God has asked us to do. And he says we can do it, but the way we do it is we have to rely on him to do it. Folks, if we don't, we're going to fall flat on our face. We'll fall flat on our face if we don't rely on Christ. Even, you know, we can plan everything and we can plan things coming up and we are and there's nothing wrong with that. And, and there's nothing with having a good time and fun and some entertainment. Uh, but the main thing is the main thing and that's winning souls. The main thing is getting the gospel out. And, and all of this and the television program and our radio and all of that stuff. We have to rely on Christ and His strength in order to do that. And, and, and it's His life. Charles Haddon Spurgeon once said this, When your own emptiness is painfully forced upon your consciousness, chide yourself that you ever dreamed of being full except in the Lord. And Charles Haddon Spurgeon. And so we, his life, he is the life. Our strength is in him. Why? Because he's the life. He's the source. He's where the strength cometh from. He is the power. See, it's not my power or your power, it's His power. Christ is the power. Christ in you. 
Christ's life in you and I. So we've got to rely on Him. See, we rely on ourselves, I think, sometimes way too much, church. Well, I can do this, and I can handle this. Well, there's no doubt some of us can, and some of you can. But wouldn't it be a whole lot better to do it in His strength? You won't get as tired. You won't get as wore out. You won't get as discouraged. Amen? Amen. Hey, if the Lord's building a house and it's His strength, then just go along for the ride. Amen? Enjoy the journey. He can build a better house than we can. Okay? And so, hey, we, this is what we got to do. See, his, He is the power. Our strength is in Him. Why? Because He's our life. He's our power. And so that's why we have to rely on that. See, it's just like this light. This light has to rely on something. Otherwise, it's not going to work. You see, if I don't put the power in it, it don't work. See, this lantern relies on Railvac. Or you might use Everready. I don't care. Whatever. These just happen to be Railvacs because they were on sale and cheaper. Amen. But isn't this a beautiful light? Man, I like this. This is nice. Good looking lantern. My hurricane lantern. It's married to sing. It'll work. What a piece of junk. It's married to sing. Oh, duh. It's empty. You see, if this is my life and it's empty, it's useless. It's not going to accomplish anything or do anything for God until I fill it up. You see. And I've got to get this right because it only goes in one way. I don't even have to put the bottom on. See, now, when I fill it up, Guess what? I got the power. Amen. Now, wait a minute. Who's the power? Christ is the power. It's His life. He's the source. But when He gets in my life, hey, I got power. He's the strength. I'm still just a shell. I'm just a container that holds the life. And Jesus is the life. And when you got the life and you got His life in you, Guess what? You're going to shine. You're going to do what this thing was designed to do, to give off light. You're going to do what this purpose, was, this purpose of this lantern was for, is to do what it's doing. And so we thank God for that, and we praise the Lord. I got a couple of these things, man. I put them all around the house when a hurricane comes. Well, I like that thing. That's nice. Man. Make sure I go home with it. Don't leave it. Some of you might take it with you. Are you kind of getting the illustration here? I think it's a good illustration is using this lantern here. Because otherwise, you see, we can't do anything. If, if that lantern did not rely on that battery, it's useless. It's of no good. It's of no value. It cannot do anything until we put the life in it. That's the same with us. Christ is the life. And so when we get the life in us, guess what? We're going to, have a, we're going to do something. We're going to shine. We're going to do something for God because we got the life in us. And guess what? Not only do we have His life in us, but when we put the batteries in there, we put the power in there. And when you got the power, you're going to do something. When you got the power, you're going to shine. When you got the power, you're going to carry out God's work. We're going to do what God's called us to do. And what is that? To preach, to warn, to teach. Amen? That's what God called us to do, church. That's His purpose for us. Oh, but you see, we got to have the light. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. Now notice what Paul said in 1 Thessalonians 5, 24. Look at your study notes there. Look at the verse. We're talking about uh, relying on him. Our strength is in him. He is the life. He is the power. Faithful is who? Faithful is he, that is God, that calleth you, who, that is God, also will, what church? He will do it. It's not you and I doing it. It's God doing it through you and I. And so we praise the Lord. 2 Corinthians 12, 9. Brother Paul put it this way. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength. See, we're talking about relying on his strength. Notice God told Paul, hey, Paul, it's my strength. It's not your strength, Paul. My strength is made perfect in weakness, Paul. So then, then Paul answers God back then and says, Well, then most gladly, therefore, will I'd rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon 
me. Now we need to learn to do that. We need to see sometimes we want to get healed all the time and get out of the situations and the circumstances and get everything healed all the time. But, you know, Paul had a thorn in the flesh. He asked three times for God to heal him, and God said, no, my grace is sufficient for you, Paul. So when you're weak, my strength is going to be made strong when you're weak. And so now, Paul, just let's move on. And Paul said, then said, and most gladly then I will glory in my affirmities, in my sickness, in my handicap, so that the power of God may rest upon me. And I'd rather have the power of God in my life and on me than to have a, a healing. Because I'm going to get that eventually anyway. Amen. Come on now, church. Then we have to rely on, not only do we rely on He is our strength, but He is our faith. He is our faith. Sunday school class, we've been going through faith. You see, it's not your faith, it's His faith. Christ is our faith. It is our faith that pleases Him. See, we've got to rely on Him for our strength because He is the life, He is the power. Then we've got to rely on Him for our faith because that faith pleases God. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. So we got to rely on Him because our faith in Him pleases Him. What does Hebrews 11, 6 say, class? We've been in there, back there, way back a few, several months ago. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. So how many of us want to please God? All right, then we got to rely on Him. Our strength is in Him. Our faith is in Him. Are you kind of getting the picture here? It's all about God. Amen. See, folks, we can't blow, blow, blow trumpets and toot horns. It's not about us. It's about Him. Everything is about Him. The work, the church, the music, the choir, the playing, everything is about the Lord. I don't care how much talent you have or don't have. You only got what you got because God gave it to you to start with. It all belongs to Him. And so we give him all the praise and all the glory. But I don't know about you, all this faith we've been going through. I've been enjoying that. And I'm getting to the point here, man, this is good. God, uh, ple my faith pleases God. And you see, the only faith I have, he gave it to me to start with. Hello. Amen. You know how you got saved? For by grace are you saved through faith. For by grace, say that with me. For by grace, what is that? God's unmerited favor. You want to know what the unmerited favor gift God gave you? Saving faith. God gave you the faith to get saved. Amen. That's why it's all about Him. To God be the glory. Whatever faith we have, but I've got to rely on Him because He is my strength. He's my life. He's my power. He's yours. All right, He's my faith. And our faith pleases Him. 11.6 says, without it, it doesn't please him. Romans chapter 14 and verse 23, Paul's talking about Christian living and how we live and act in our lives. And he comes down to Romans chapter 14, verse 23, and he says, anything whatsoever is not done in faith is sin. Wow, take swallow that pill. Whatsoever means whatsoever. That means anything. That's not done in faith is sin. Go read it, Romans 14, 23. It's exactly what it says. That's the last half of that verse on 1423. So that's why, you see, we need to have the faith that we need. So we're going to rely on Him, church. Why? Because He's our strength. Why? Because He's our life. He's our power. He's our faith. And it's our faith that pleases God. All right? Secondly, tonight, the next R word. We're going to, if we're going to do what we're going to do and accomplish what we're going to accomplish for God, not only are we going to rely on Him, we're talking about this being alive in Christ, we're going to have to relinquish to Him. Uh-oh, that means some of us have got to get out of the way. All right, we're going to have to relinquish to Him. All right, what's the word relinquish mean? The word relinquish means to withdraw, uh, to retreat from, to abandon, to, to give up, to let go. See, so if I'm going to rely on God for everything, and, and I'm going to relinquish to Him, you know, and I'm going to let go, I'm going to abandon, I'm going to give up, I'm going to retreat from, watch this, from what? And I put down a whole list of things, and you can write them down. From my will, 
from my desires, my plans, my wants, my goings, my ways. Hello, talk to me. See, if we're going to do anything, we've got to relinquish those things and let Christ take over in our lives. We have to withdraw from those things. We have to abandon those things if we want to be alive in Christ, if we want to do what God wants us to do this year and be all that God wants us to be, if we want to be all of Jesus in all of me. If I want all of Jesus, folks, I can't have all the other. I have to relinquish those things. It's not my will, but thy will be done. Lord, it's not my way, but thy way be done. Why? Because my way is higher than your ways, God says. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Amen? Amen. And so if we want to accomplish anything for God and we want to be alive in Christ and Christ in us and all of me and Jesus and all of Jesus in me, then I have to relinquish my plans. I have to relinquish my ways, my wants, my desires, my goings. Okay? Are you with me? Why? Because I want Jesus first in my life. Not all these other things. Okay? So how am I going to do that? How am I going to be able to relinquish all of those things that I just talked about and have what we've been talking about? Well, I think we find it there in the, in the passage there. We need to reckon ourselves dead to sins. I am crucified with Christ. You're dead. We need to reckon ourselves dead to sin. Now the word reckon means to count to calculate, to compute, to consider, to regard. You and I need to do all those things ourselves dead to sin because why? I am crucified with Christ. Romans 7, 14 says, For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, Mm, sold under sin. Wow. Who is spiritual? The law. That's the Word of God. The Word of God is is, is spiritual, but when it comes to you and I, we're carnal. Okay? Isn't that what Paul said to the church of Corinth? He said, you babies, you believers haven't grown up, you're still carnal, and you're still carnal still, he said. And here, the word of Paul tells us that. And so, you see, I've got to reckon myself dead to sin. Look at Romans 6, 11. The brother Paul says this, Likewise, reckon, or count, calculate, compute, consider, regard, ye also yourselves to, to be dead indeed unto sin, but what? Here it is. Alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. We're talking about alive in Christ today. So if I'm going to be alive in Christ, I have to crucify myself. If I'm going to be alive in Christ tonight, I have to reckon myself dead to sin. I have to count myself dead to sin. I have to calculate, compute, consider myself, regard myself as dead to sin. How many of you are familiar with R.A. Torrey? Dr. R.A. Torrey, great pastor of the past, gone home to be with the Lord, great theologian. Great book on R.A. Torrey on prayer. You want to get a book on prayer, read R.A. Torrey's book on prayer. All right? It changed your life about prayer. But let me read to you a quote that I found from Dr. R.A. Torrey. When Jesus died, he died as my representative. Would you all agree with that? Amen. Okay. And I died in him. Listen to what he said. When he arose, he arose as my representative. And I arose in him. When he ascended up on high and took his place at the right hand of the Father in glory, he ascended as my representative. And I ascended in him. And today I am seated with Christ in the heavenlies. Paul talks about that in Ephesians. Sitting in the heavenlies. I look at the cross of Christ And I know that the atonement has been made for my sins. I look at an open sepulcher and of the risen and ascended Lord. And I know that the atonement has been accepted. There no longer remains a single sin on me. No matter how many or how great my sins may have been. Now because of that we need to reckon ourselves dead to sin. We no longer need to live in sin. Paul says, let not sin have its rule or its reign in your body. 
Don't come under the rule and the reign of sin. You need to reckon yourself, as we talked about this morning, in the casket as a dead man in the casket. Next time we go to attend a funeral, I hope there's none left. I hope we go to glory. But if you go to someone else's that has passed on and you see that body laying there, you need to remind yourself, you know what? I'm just like that person there when it comes to sin. Or that's what I need to be like, that person laying there in your mind and heart that I am dead to sin. I'm going to compute. I'm going to count. I'm going to consider. I'm going to regard myself as dead to sin. We no longer need to serve sin. We no longer need to let sin rule in our mortal bodies, the Scripture says. So we need to stop. We need to relinquish to Him. Okay? Why? relinquish and wrecking ourselves dead to sin then we need to receive we must receive his fullness you see if i'm going to reckon myself dead well i've got that now i've got to replace it with something amen and we want to replace it with his fullness we must receive his fullness okay so what does that mean well colossians 2 9 for in him that is christ dwelleth all the fullness of the godhead bodily So you see, when you and I are alive in Christ, and Christ is alive in us, you know what? I have all of the fullness of the Godhead bodily in me. Because whatever Christ has, I have Christ living in me. So if Christ has all of the fullness of the Godhead bodily dwelling in Him, who now lives inside of me, and the Holy Spirit dwells in me, then I have everything that He has in me. So man, I just think about that tonight, church. We have the fullness of the Godhead living in us. That's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, the Blessed Trinity. Amen? Living inside of us. So you see, we need to receive that fullness. So how do we do that? By being filled with the Holy Spirit. By being filled with the Holy Spirit. And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess. But be filled with the Spirit. The word filled, there's also another word for be controlled by the Spirit of God, Ephesians 5.18. Paul put it this way in Galatians 5.25. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Paul said again in Romans 8.14 that we are to be led by the Spirit. He said again in Galatians 5.18 that we are to be led of the Spirit. There's a difference between by and of. So in other words, we need to receive God's fullness. And how do we receive that? By the filling of the Holy Ghost. Now Jesus said that to be filled. That's an imperative. It's a command. It's not an option there, church. We're to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And when Jesus was, was teaching the disciples, he said, now listen, fellas. Over in Luke's gospel, it's recorded in two or three of the gospels. And I like one of them, the one that the one says in the way the writer put it, one of our apostles. There he says, now listen, you men being evil, know how to give good gifts to your kids. And it's interesting, Jesus called them evil. Because you see, there's none that doeth good, no, not one. There is none righteous, no, not one. We've all gone out of our way and become unprofitable servants. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. But he says, and never mind, you being evil, know how to give good gifts to your your family, your kids. How much more, Jesus said, how much more will the, your heavenly Father give you the Holy Ghost if you will ask Him? And you see, we are afraid and scared to death of the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit. We need to ask God to fill us with the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, if you will ask Him, how much more will He give it to you if you will just ask Him? You need to receive His fullness tonight. I'm telling you, this is really good stuff. So we must rely on Him, amen? Amen. He's our strength. He's our life. He's our power. We must rely on our faith because it pleases Him. And by the way, He gave us the faith to rely on, amen? amen? Then we must relinquish to Him. We must relinquish everything to Him. Our plans, our ways, our goals, everything. And then reckon ourselves dead to sin. And then we need to receive his fullness. See, we get the sin out. See, we get emptied out of that, then we got to replace it with something. You see. When I take this out, I empty the canister. 
There's nothing in it. I've got to fill it up with something. And so what I need to fill it up with that this represents my life, I need to take the lid off of it. This is the lid of your life. And I need to fill it up with the fullness of God. Now this is what talks about living the Christian life. I told you this is not for wimps. Amen? Amen. Hey, Christian life takes, uh, takes men and women with character and strength and, 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 and steadfastness. But fill yourself up tonight with the fullness of God. How do I do that? By being filled with the Holy Spirit. And then by asking God to fill you with His Spirit. Now the next time you go to give somebody a gift, remember what Jesus said. If you know how to give a gift to this person, then let him remind you when you do that. How much more will your heavenly father, how much more will your daddy in heaven give you the Holy Spirit if you will just ask him? Church, don't be afraid to ask God to fill you with the Holy Spirit. Don't ask to be afraid to ask God to fill you with the fullness of God. These are some great New Year commitments to make. To commit to God this year in 2019, I'm going to be alive in Christ. And the only way I can be alive in Christ, I've got to have Christ in me, the hope of glory. The only way I'm going to have any power or strength and have the fullness of God, I've got to get it into my life. Amen. Otherwise, guess what? It becomes useless. It doesn't serve its purpose. It doesn't do what it was designed to do. And, and nothing's going to be accomplished because, hey, this thing hasn't got no juice. It hasn't got any power. We've got the power. You need to get plugged in and get filled up with the power. You see, you know, it was a good example. Maybe the Lord gave us that example. What happened, 20, what happened five minutes ago? Man, we were just going strong there, weren't we? Having a good time, minding our own business, enjoying studying the Word of God, when all of a sudden the power went out. And you know what? This microphone became useless. It was not doing what it was supposed to be doing. It wasn't serving the purpose that it was designed for. Because why? Oh, I had a power pack on. I have a receiver back here. I got everything that's needed except one, two lousy things. Two little $2 batteries. Amen? Hey, the Holy Spirit's a whole lot more than $2. But you see, we can't do nothing without Him. Let's get filled with Him. Ask Him. Don't be afraid of the Holy Ghost. He'll scare some of you half to death, I bet. It's all right. He's willing and He's ready to do it. Because, see, folks, we can't do nothing without Him. How are we going to do anything for God and accomplish anything for God if we're not filled of the fullness of the Godhead? Amen. If we're not full of the Holy Ghost? If we don't have His strength? If we don't have His life in our life? If we don't have His power? We just become useless, meaningless, worthless in our service for the Lord. Now, you need to understand that. You're not useless and not worthless. You're worth everything. God paid, paid and died for you. You're worth all of heaven. We're talking about service. We're talking about doing something and accomplishing something for God this year in 2019. Amen. And we can't do it with dead people. We got to do it with alive people. Christ in you. The hope of glory. You in Christ. But in 219, all of Jesus in all of me. Don't have all of Jesus in one leg. You need all of Jesus in your whole life. It's just like that, that battery, that light here. It has four batteries in it. It has all of the batteries in it to make it work. But if I take it apart and take one battery out, I still got three, it's not going to work. Because it doesn't have all of it. I can take one out of this unit I have on my belt here. And it's not going to work. It takes two. I have to have all the juice. We need all of Jesus in us. 
and we need to be all in Him. Why would you even want to settle for part of Jesus when you can have Him all? Why would you only want all of Jesus in just a part of you when you can have Him in all of you? Oh, you see, and then lastly, we need to go home. We've got to hurry. All right, we must reflect Him. If we need to rely on Him, we need to relinquish to Him, we need to reflect Him. And we need to reflect Him in your life every day in this year of 2019. Every day we need to reflect the Lord Jesus Christ in our lives. That is, if Christ is in me. If Christ is in me, then I need to reflect His life every day in my life. Listen to what Acts 4.13 says. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, they perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men. I like that. They marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. You know what? They had all of Jesus. They had the fullness of the Godhead in them. So how can I reflect Him this year? How can we reflect God if Christ is living in me? And I'm living in Him. And all that we talked about this morning. How can we do that? I think we can do that. How do I do this? By reflecting His Word. We need to reflect His Word. Now, no, wa- now watch this. Add on there. Put a little add on there to it in our daily lives. We need to reflect His Word, church, in our daily lives. And again, we're going to go back to James, and we gave it to you. Just one verse. Be ye doers of the Word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. You see, if all I'm going to be in 2019 is a hearer, my brother James, who's the half-brother of my Lord, who wrote the first book of the New Testament, tells me I'm deceived. So how do I reflect His Word? By being a doer of the Word. By being a doer of the Word. That's how we reflect God's Word this year in 2019. By doing the Word. You see, Dr. D.L. Moody said this, the Bible, has not given, the Bible was not given to increase our knowledge, but to change our lives. Amen. See, the Bible wasn't given to us to gain knowledge. It was given to us to change our lives. And you know what changes our lives is the logos, the Word. The written Word will change our life, and the living Word that's living in me will change my life. And how I know that it's changed is I do it. I'm doing it. That's the proof of the evidence of it. James says, you say you got faith? Prove it. Man walks into church in the book of James, in the first chapter, he says, if a man walks in and says, I have faith. And James says, yeah, I do too. James says, I'll tell you what, show me your faith. He says, I'll show you my faith by my works. And he says, if that man cannot do that, that man has dead faith. He's a walking dead man. We're right back to being dead. See, we got to prove it. Reflect his word this year. Let the word of God dwell in you richly. And then let it flow through your life every day. We need to reflect his witness. Amen? We need to reflect Christ's witness. For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister. And to give his life a ransom for many. Mark 10, 45. We need to be ministering this year. If we're going to reflect Christ, we're going to reflect his life through the word. And then we're going to reflect it through ministering. One to another. We got to, folks, we got to get off the sidelines. Got to get off the bench and we got to go to work. Anybody can sit on the bench. Okay? And then lastly, we need to reflect His wonder-working power in our lives. His wonder-working power in our lives. Because why? It's His strength. It's His faith. It's His life. It's His power. Amen? And how are we going to do that? We read this morning. We read it in one of our passages in Colossians there. That He's going to work in me mightily. You see. Reflect His wonder-working power in your life and in my life this year in 2019. Alive in Christ. Are you alive in Christ tonight? 
or are you dead? See, that's the question we have to answer. And how we do that is by what we went through this morning and, and tonight. Are we practicing doing the things that we looked at from the scriptures this morning and tonight? If we are, then we are alive in Christ. If we're not, we're dead. And we need to be alive. We need to be alive in Christ. I tell you, I'm just, I'm still, it's even hard to come and preach tonight because I'm still living in this morning. I had such a good time this morning and such felt a presence of God's presence in this place and in you and in this auditorium and on me up here on the platform. I mean, me and the Lord were just having a great time. You remember the movie, uh, The Chariots of Fire? And that young missionary going to China? And his sister wanting him to go to, uh, what is it, Little? Wanting to go to China? And he said, yeah, but I, I got to run the Olympics. He said, God made me for a purpose. Not only to serve him on China, on the mission field, but God made me to run. And he made me to run fast. And he told his sister, when I'm running, and you saw in the movie, if you saw the Church of Fire, he gets in that stride near the end, and that head all of a sudden comes back. And that smile on his face, and he pulls ahead of everybody and wins. And he tells his sister, when that takes place and I'm running, I feel his pleasure. Well, I felt his pleasure this morning. Alive in Christ this year for 2019. Let's make that our motto. Let's make that our commitment. That God, by your grace, your spirit, your mercy, I want to be alive in Christ this year in 2019. Lord, I want to be alive in Christ in your presence. I want to be alive in Christ in your purpose. Lord, I want to be alive in Christ in your power. Lord, I want to be alive in Christ as I rely on your strength because you are my life, you are my power. Lord, I want to relinquish everything of mine to you. And I'm going to reckon myself dead to my plans, my will, my ways, my hobbies, my interest, so that the power of God might rest upon me. And Lord, I'm going to reckon myself dead to sin, and then I'm going to be uh, refreshed uh, uh, with your fullness. I'm going to receive your fullness. And when I receive your fullness, then I'm going to reflect your life through your word. Through your witness. Through your mighty, wonder-working power in and through my life. I don't know of a better commitment than that to make. Amen. I really don't. We need to surrender all to Christ. All of Jesus and all of me. And all of me and all of Jesus. That's a good commitment, church, for this year. And there's no telling what we can do and accomplish for the Lord Jesus Christ to give Him the glory, to give Him the honor, and see God do great and mighty things. That's why I love Jeremiah 33, 3. I pray to the Lord daily that verse. Call unto me, He said. He told Jeremiah, the weeping prophet. He said, Jeremiah, you call unto me, and I will show you great and mighty things that thou knowest not that's my prayer God show to us great and mighty things that we don't even know about through your power and your strength it's just an empty shell and a container until the power turns on Father, we thank you for tonight. We praise you. We give you glory. We give you everything, Lord. But most of all, may we give you our lives tonight. Father, all of Jesus in me 
and all of me in Jesus. Father, that your will will be done and accomplished because we are alive in Christ. We have resurrected with you. We died with you. We were buried with you. We resurrected with you. We've gone to glory with you spiritually. We are already seated in the heavenlies with Christ Jesus. Oh, thank you, Father. Father, do a great work in our lives. Lord, we surrender all. Father, we're just your servants. Father, we're just your tools, your instruments that desire to be used of God for your glory and for your honor. That Jesus might be magnified and glorified in this place, in this church, in the lives of these believers in this year of 2019. And we'll praise you for it. And we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' wonderful and matchless name, amen and amen. And praise the Lord. Defined by the past, but defined by the cross.